In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle Joshua Selman of Eternity Network International as he takes you on a journey into the wisdom of God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. Inside, outside, let us bless the name of the Lord, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. We honor you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Shabbat the Lord. Sing songs of worship to him. Let an incense of of worship rise from within you. To the God of all flesh, we bow, we worship. Let your name be lifted. Let our King be lifted. tonight that you be enthroned in our lives I pray that you bless your people scattered all around this place and across different nations of the world, different parts of this nation, bless lift, equip, build let there be healings let there be deliverances I pray oh God that your people will experience the fullness of your power in the name of Jesus Christ Amen and Amen. God bless you. You're very welcome. Please be seated. I want us in one minute to just appreciate all those following us online. They may not be able to see us, but they can hear our clap. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's honor them. Thanks to the power of technology. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Tonight I want your spirit to be very sensitive. I want to, it's a prayer meeting. We are going to pray tonight. But I want to share with you a few things that I consider will truly, truly empower us. You know, I, I sat back and I was thinking today, just thinking of the, the topics, the teachings that God has brought from this place to the body of Christ, especially to us here different aspects of the life of the kingdom from prayer to excellence to success to spirituality to warfare to finances to family life the lord has been lavish granting us access to deep secrets the mysteries of the kingdom i was teaching the school of ministry students and um, i taught them something that i think is is, is good for us to know i said um Every true apostolic ministry must be able to communicate a dimension of the revelation of God to a generation. In every dispensation, there is a dimension of the dealings of God that He apportions for that generation to know about Him. And it is part of the apostolic ministry to be able to capture that dimension of the understanding of God that He has apportioned for a people and to be able to accurately teach God's people so that they having that understanding will come into that experience praise the Lord and um, honestly God has been faithful to us granting us access every time I sit back and I listen to the testimonies I look at the lives of so many people here and looking at the things that God has done what God is doing I get text messages every day from people across several parts of this nation, around the world, just communicating their gratitude for what the teachings, the meetings have done. And for me, I am deeply, deeply humbled. And tonight, He will show us that path again. Never be tired of learning the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets of God. The mysteries of the kingdom are how men rise. That's how men become powerful in this system. Hallelujah. Paul said, I went up by revelation, not by desire. I went up by revelation. So when you access the truths of the kingdom, they have a way of making you powerful. It is God's design that in every territory scattered across the earth, there will be men and women who have paid the price to be his image bearers in reality that at every given point of our lives and our environment that he must find an envoy somebody that can allow the multifaceted possibilities of god to find expression within a given territory the kingdom only comes when god is able to find sufficient men who have aligned themselves sufficiently to his purposes through knowledge and obedience when you can find a man who has paid that price of alignment then you see the beauty of the power and the glory of god displayed within a territory the revelation of god that is seen in a territory is not all that god is it is the limitation that the aligned vessels have provided he will have to work with the vessels that are available at any given time are we together now so god can step into a place like zaria and never be able to manifest his healing dimension never be able to manifest himself as a deliverer that does not mean he cannot heal it doesn't mean he cannot deliver but the level of alignment it takes for a vessel to allow him release that possibility he cannot find it so he will have to make do with what is available but happy and blessed is any man who pays the price of alignment to be able to be an effective host of god's glory allowing every dimension of god that he desires to find expression to find expression and this personally is the theme for my life that there will be nothing god seeks to do in a territory 
that he would not be able to do just because I am not aligned enough. And so we continue to press daily. We press through knowledge. We press through desire. We take advantage of his grace and mercy. It's like a ladder. We keep climbing and we are being transformed. We are being enlarged. Our capacities are we experience that expansion in the spirit and we are able to host more of him then you find out that your life becomes an effulgence of a sign and a wonder the reality of that immortal dimension of the workings of God in your life starts becoming glaring it becomes clear to people that this is not a normal human being and they are not lying because divinity is swallowing you up gradually and you are beginning to manifest possibilities of someone who is obviously under the influence of a spirit. Like you see someone manifesting under the anointing. Ordinarily, you don't have the capacity to move in that kind of speed. When you see someone manifesting unusual strength, you know that that is another agency through him. Every time you align in the spirit you help to advance the purposes of god let me tell you something god is searching for men he still is searching for men never should we wallow in that deception that because there are many churches there are many programs happening it means that god is finding a people no alignment is not something that um, is a costly exercise it's a costly sacrifice alignment is one of the hardest things for a believer to do because it will require pruning it will require death it will require discipline it will require commitment it will cost you your tears it will cost you your appetites but the end thereof is glory so the bible says that i reckon that the sufferings of this present time right romans 8 and verse 18 i reckon i come to terms with the fact that the sufferings the constraints of this present time you are on your way to becoming something there is a revelation in the heart of the father that you should become and he says on your way to becoming that thing there will be constraints you will cry it will cost you are we together now obedience is costly very costly and so it will constrain you and when that happens, he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, he gives you hope. He says, It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. When you watch a woman pregnant, the constraints, she may have to spit when she doesn't have to spit, she may have to go through all kinds of constraints. But give her nine months in that condition. The moment she gives birth to a child, she becomes an object of celebration. People come around to look at the miracle of another life through a woman. That's how people will gather around your life one day and wonder the level of alignment it would take to manifest the kind of anointing and glory that you're manifesting. Listen, let me tell you something spending time in the presence of god has value in every wise it has monetary value it has influence value it has time redemption value there is no time spent in the presence of god that is a waste away with that religious proposition that people bring that when you wait in god's presence you are busy people stay in God's presence and they are looking at their watches as though they have something to do. Most of the things we seek can only be found in His presence. Only be found in His presence. It pays to wait. And while we wait, it pays to hear Him. Because for every time He speaks, He redeems your future. For every time He speaks, He grants you access to rise that ladder of power, that ladder of grace. Hallelujah. It says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. Not just through your desire. Grace, unction, we want power, we want to see the glory of God. The effulgence of His person. Only a lazy and unserious student will attend lectures for four weeks and say I'm tired. 
No. You continue. Why? Because there is a goal. You know that one day you aim for something. And so like a man who wants to win the Olympic, you press. You press. There are times that you will have to go for the lectures in the rain. But you overlook the inconveniences of the moment. Are we together? I want you to pray in one minute and cry and say, Lord, I'm here again. Continue the training. Continue the dealing. Make me wiser. Make me better. Let me encounter another dimension of your anointing. Another dimension of your glory. Spirit of the living God, I have come tonight to align myself the more. This is the school of the Spirit. I have come. Make me powerful. Open my eyes. Activate my senses in the Spirit. Place something upon my life that my generation will live to celebrate. Let me not pass as an ordinary person. Let a deposit of eternity be upon me. Mm. Do something in my life that will cost me. It will, it will last me my lifetime. I have come to eat of the bread of the Spirit. This is Bethel. The place where the Spirit of God will grant you fresh manna. Fresh manna. Fresh manna. He told the prophet, eat for the journey is far. You will need that mystery. You will need that revelation. The fierceness of life will not allow you to learn in the face of battle. You will need to be prepared. The fierceness of life will not allow you to be searching for mysteries when the trouble comes. You must be equipped so that before it comes you know what to apply. That you have capacity to read the writings on the wall and know what to do and what to say. He said Jesus himself knew what to do. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Listen. It is costly to start looking for answers when the trouble comes. You see, sometimes the trouble has the capacity of destroying you and will not give you a chance to learn what law to overcome. You prepare for battle before battle. You don't prepare for battle during battle. Are we together? Don't wait until they tell you your wife cannot give birth. And then you now run and try to find the mysteries that can be able to navigate another path and cause your wife to give birth. Don't wait until they drive you from work. And then you now say, what is the mystery of favor again? No, you are too late. Surround yourself with mysteries like chariots. So that when the devil fires his arrow, before it gets to you, a revelation you have in store will arise. The, the shield, listen, that shield is a defense. Whether you are sleeping or awake, you have a bad dream. You are not even praying a scripture just fires from your dream realm. He shall keep his angels charge over me. Don't react to things when they come. Are we together now? Yes. Don't wait until the day they tell you, oh, something happened and you are now panicking. No. God is equipping us with the mysteries that will prepare us so that nothing surprises you. Someone comes and meets you and says, we're in trouble. And you say, what happened? Rain washed our house. You say, glory be to God. Don't worry. There is a system in the spirit where we can remedy for that constraint. Listen, your confidence in life is based on the, the mysteries of the kingdom that you are equipped with. Fear is a product of ignorance. You will always be afraid when you perceive that you are not in control of a situation. This is the reason for fear. You never fear anything you have control over. Ignorance gives the devil control over every aspect of our lives. So we don't know whether we are going to live or die, we say. We don't know whether we will be rich or poor. We don't know whether we will be successful or failures. We don't know whether people will favor us or not. 
God cannot keep you to walk in a system surrounded by such confusion and ignorance and then tell you to not fear. No. The antidote to fear is knowledge. Knowledge. So that when your uncle looks at you and says, I can't help you again, I'm sorry. You know how, you say, uncle, thank you. Thank you for what you have done so far. Because you have a mystery that every good and perfect gift comes from above. It only comes through men, not from men. So if one man is not available, heaven is still available and he can find another man. That revelation alone settles you. So you are not jumping around and saying, Uncle, what can we do? That's a foolish and stupid way of speaking. It's like going to a filling station. All fuel comes from the ground, not the filling station. So if the filling station packs up, we know that there's still fuel in Nigeria. All you need to do is look for another filling station. Are we together now? May God grant us knowledge. See, the Bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. Once you find out that your life is a product of fear and panic, it's not because you are young or old. It's not because you are a civil servant or a businessman. It's not because you are living in the north or south. Uh -uh. It's because you have not sustained the understanding that gives you confidence. Nobody is born with confidence. It's a resultant effect of something. Joy is a product of something that you know. Fear is a product of something that you know or something that you don't know. Hallelujah. Please sit down. I have such passion to see us grow in the spirit. So we don't just deceive ourselves and say, I'm a spiritual man. A spiritual man is not, is not something ambiguous. There are exact standards that can measure spirituality. Spirituality is not something that one man hides in the pocket and says, I am spiritual. No, there are clear spiritual standards. If they have been met, you are spiritual. If they have not been met, you are not spiritual. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. That's why we labor to make sure that the atmosphere is set week in, week out. Because we know that someone's destiny is dependent on what is shared here. Someone's life is dependent on what is shared here. This is an issue of life and death. It's not just an issue of a voluntary thing. No, it says they are alive to those who find them. That means those who don't find them can die. Are we together now? Life is spiritual. That's why the Bible says everything. Listen. It says everything that is done in the house of God must be done from a standpoint of spiritual mindedness. This is not my teaching, but I just felt a need to do that. Everything in the house of God must be consecrated and it must be done under the influence of the anointing. Otherwise, it will add to jeopardizing the atmosphere and not allow God's presence find expression. If you are a cleaner in the house of God, you must clean under the anointing to contribute to making the atmosphere set. You can't say, I'm not a member of prayer department. I'm just a keyboardist. This thing this gentleman is playing is not just music. If his personal secret place his personal altar has a problem. The sound that will come out from there will obstruct what God is doing in your spirit. He will be playing the same thing and wonder why it's not edifying you. Because he's playing his secret place. Amplifying it to people. He's not playing music. A gentleman holding a camera like this and he's not doing it spiritual. You will be surprised at what dimension of interruption such carnality can provide in the spirit and stop the anointing of the spirit I, I'm, I'm, he can do his work but if it is not done spiritually the protocol people standing if they are just standing like employed people you see that's why you are a pastor here let me teach you a big secret value spirituality more than talent and gifts talent and gifts are secondary to spirituality Nobody should serve in the house of God just because he's talented. 
No. Your talent is inconsequential as far as your spirituality is concerned. Talent only becomes useful when you are dealing with spiritual people. So we have our churches and our groups and ministries full of very, very gifted people. But all kinds of spiritual obstructions. You see someone who hold a mic, beautiful voice, but you can't tell why your spirit is resisting what is coming from him. You love the song, but something about the voice, there is no physical reason why your spirit should not receive it. Something about an atmosphere that he or she is carrying or not carrying is responsible for that. That's why we pray. That's why we wait in his presence. It's not just to increase skill. It's so that we can come with the atmosphere of heaven. And everything that is communicated to you, even if it is something you have had before, it comes with a fresh anointing. It comes with a fresh atmosphere. And it can cause transformation. You are not in ministry if you cannot host the presence of God. No. Any church, anybody that cannot host the presence of God in their meetings, capture the presence of God, is a cinema. It's a complete waste of time. So everything must be done under the anointing. We have trained the workers and we still encourage them all the time. Be spiritual. As an usher, you are not just holding people under the anointing. You are not just cleaning seats. You are spiritual. Are we together now? Someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of your service. Not just your service. The spirituality of it. Someone's destiny is dependent on the spirituality of my teaching. My preaching. Not just the dispensing of gifts. But the spirituality of it. That's what can bring the transformation. And bring the miracles. I just thought that it's good that we remind ourselves it's not so much about skill it's not so much about action but the the fire the passion the presence the glory that backs up what we do that's what produces the results Tonight, I want to teach very briefly on the altar of prayer. Pay attention, I'm going to share something with you that will bless your life. The altar of prayer. I want us to understand the mystery of altars. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will see. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you. Oh, God, my altar is calling you. Oh God, my altar is calling me. Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, take my praise. Hallelujah. Listen. The body of Christ is full of a lot of ignorance when it comes to the issue of prayer, when it comes to the issue of warfare, when it comes to the issue of the interaction between the realm of the spirit and the earth realm. There is gross ignorance in the body of Christ as to the mysteries that are responsible for these operations. That's what I've been seeking to do. To teach us and help us understand how men can contact the realm of the spirit. Because man by design is the only entity 
that on legal grounds has the authorization to make contact with the realm of the spirit and make contact with the physical realm at will every other entity needs a system of authorization are we together now altars most people do not know what altars are and for most people when you hear altar you just think oh it's just these ignorant prayer ministries around that are just looking for a way you you will die like a chicken when you are ignorant of the mystery of altars there is no great man who does not understand this whether he admits it openly or not is a different thing but let me tell you there is no man doing business in this kingdom or in the secular world who does not understand the mystery of altars pay attention to what you will learn and you will see triumph in 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 ways that will shock you an altar is a system of authorization i want to share a few things with you about altars an altar is a system of authorization an altar is not just a monument it is a system of authorization an altar is a platform write it down where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds an altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds i'm taking out time for us to write this because i want us to understand it i said an altar is a system of authorization and then an altar is a platform where on legal grounds the realm of the spirit is allowed to make contact with the physical realm there are other illegal routes there are other illegitimate platforms but the legitimate platform where the realm of the spirit can find expression in this realm is an altar because according to the law of territory a spirit or an entity cannot enter another entity another territory without the configuration to suit that territory for instance a spirit should not be in the earth without a body that's against the law of territory if you must function in the earth realm as a territory you must have a body are we together now so every spirit including god is at the mercy of a body or an altar to find expression in a territory the first death recorded in the bible happen on account of altars two men brothers went to offer sacrifices and all of them created platforms that was way before the old testament adam had access to mysteries and he taught his children how to invoke the presence of god and it's not the way it is today there and then you will know whether what you did worked or not and the bible says abel did something and cain did something too and all of a sudden the sacrifice of abel ascended the heavens are we together now and then for cain nothing happened and then cain killed his brother and blood spilled upon the earth and he thought it was over but the bible told us that discussion continued in the realm of the spirit something about that activity called the presence of god and god said cain there is a discussion going on in heaven but this discussion is between me and blood so what is going on he said, am i my brother's keeper I said, ah, don't tell lies there is a witness standing in heaven here that blood a symbol of an altar is granted me authorization to probe you and because of that i'm going to curse you judgment still happened even after abel died listen very carefully to what i'm teaching you supernatural system of authorization an altar let me give you one more definition is where covenants are activated and maintained an altar 
is the platform where covenants are both activated and maintained. A covenant cannot work without an altar. It is an altar that gives life to a covenant. It's impossible for altars to work. Covenants to work without an altar. An altar is like the battery that powers this gadget for instance. The potentials of this gadget is only seen when you slot in the battery. That's what an altar is. It gives life to a covenant. Now write this down please. Altars can be physical monuments. Altars can be institutions. And altars can be people. Altars can be physical monuments. Like we had in the Old Testament. They would erect stones. Altars can be institutions. Like the Jerusalem temple that was built by Solomon. He said, oh God, if anybody faces this temple and prays, hearken to that person's prayer. Not because of the rightness of the prayer, but a covenant that was enacted there. And an altar was raised to that effect. The reason why salvation, the covenant of salvation can work, is because there is an altar that was erected not just in the earth, in heaven. The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus the high priest carried his blood to the most holy place in heaven and poured it upon an altar. That is still speaking today. That is the basis upon which whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, whether in you are sleeping, whether you are awake, it kicks that reality, you will be saved. Because there is an altar that eternally secures that. There are many platforms that God has created to allow spirit entities to find expression in the earth realm, to come and assist men, to come and empower men. But if we do not understand those platforms, then we will not be able to take advantage of it. And one of it is what I'm talking about tonight, an altar of prayer. As a system of authorization, an altar of prayer as a mystery that on legal grounds authorizes the realm of the spirit to influence the activities of men here in the earth realm. Please write this down. The most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life. The most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life. Not Bible study. No, sir. The most accurate measure of how healthy your spiritual life is is your prayer life. No matter what else is working in your life, if your prayer life is dead, then you are not spiritual. Are we together? Anyone can preach. Anyone can teach. But not everyone can pray. Never forget this. It's very easy to preach. Very easy to teach. But it's a sacrifice to pray. Any and everyone can preach. Any and everyone can teach. But not everyone can pray. Because prayer is a sacrifice. It's a mystery. Let me tell you something. God is so meticulous about the revelation of altars that He rules the world sitting on an altar. The very throne room is like a shrine surrounded with mysteries. The epicenter of the throne room is the very throne that He sits upon. That throne you see is an altar. It's what makes Him the Ancient of Days. He sits upon that altar and manipulates things according to his predeterminate counsel. Doesn't have to walk around heaven to find out who is rebellious. There is a system that has been designed to ensure order. An altar. Anyone who will walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint 
of an altar everyone who seeks to walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar tonight we are particularly looking at the altar of prayer the ministry of prayer is one that is largely hated by many either because of the spiritual energy that it involves or because of the sacrifice and the discipline that is involved in the ministry of prayer but scattered around scripture all through the bible are scriptures that encourage believers to pray and it makes them understand that their lives and their victories dependent on it in luke chapter 18 verse 1 the bible says he spake this parable to the end that means the goal of this parable was to teach men a lesson and the lesson is that men ought always to pray and not to faint always always not a circumstantial activity men ought always to pray and not to faint in matthew chapter 21 when you read from verse 13 the bible says jesus entered the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all kinds of things in the temple and he was angry and in verse 13 chapter 21 he scattered everywhere and said my house shall be called a house of prayer my house shall be called a house of prayer it's impossible to be a man of prayer and ignore the word but it's possible to be a man of the word and ignore prayer when the devil wants to deceive you he makes you look like you have an option to choose between prayer and the word and then he indoctrinates you and carries takes advantage of your passion for knowledge and keeps you to be cold and dry and lukewarm and all of a sudden you begin to search scriptures like a philosopher and there is no power no grace no efficiency every great ministry starts from the altar of prayer any ministry that does not start as a prayer ministry will not last it's impossible the ministry of jesus started as a prayer ministry the moment he was filled with the holy spirit he was driven of the spirit 40 days and 40 nights traveling in prayer and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit all of a sudden his fame began to spread devils will fly around and say no 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 you have come to destroy us before our time the ministry of prayer In James chapter 5 verse 16 Please give it to us James chapter 5 verse 16 I want you to understand this Tonight is an admonishment And then we are going to pray James 5 verse 16 He says confess your faults to one another And pray for one another That he may be healed Then he says the effectual prayer Of a righteous man He says availeth much Availeth much Amplified says it is dynamic in its working. It can produce results. And we are going to examine these results. That the prayer of a believer is not just an empty talk. It's not just an exercise in futility. It's not just a religious system to feel spiritual. That every time men pray, there is an effect. Now theologically speaking, the classic scripture that is used to represent the activity of altars is Genesis chapter 28. We are not turning there for time's sake, but many of us know it. I'm just giving you a little theological background. Um, Abraham had passed across a region and the Bible says that he set up an altar there. And many years later, Jacob, his son, are we together now? A son in the flesh now, a, a generation, now was passing that place and the night time came. And he felt, look, let me just lie down and sleep. And the Bible says he put stones together and laid down to sleep. He didn't pray for an encounter. He didn't beg for an encounter. The moment he slept, the Bible says his eyes were open and he saw strange activities happening. The angels ascending, descending. It was like a, a portal, a ladder. And at the top of it was God himself. And he was surprised when he woke up he said wow this is a portal this is the gate of heaven 
I saw something that happened. A portal, an altar. The Lord was in this place. And I knew not. Now watch this. It's because Jacob slept there and recorded his experience that we know that that place had an effect. Do you know that whether or not Jacob slept there, you can be passing peacefully and for whatever reason, cross across that place and something happens to you. All of a sudden you find out that the sickness just disappeared. You didn't pray. Now you are wondering what happened. Now you don't know. It was Jacob's experience that helped us to understand that there was such a thing. The same way Elijah, when he was about to leave, he knew that there was a, an exact portal that can take men physically. He went beyond the Jordan and he said, Elijah asked, I'm about to leave. And right before his eyes, he saw chariots. When Jesus was about to levitate to go to heaven, he knew exactly where to stand. When he, they watched him and he began to rise. There are physical portals in the earth that open up to the realm of the spirit not visions physical places a man can stand there today and have encounters whether you are the prophetic or not which is understand this many people understand this i wish i had time to teach you on altars because i would teach you that one of the natural ways of establishing an altar is consistency of a practice within a region it opens up an altar consistency of practice within a region that that atmosphere is spiritually acclimatized the moment you practice something consistently you attract the spirit dimension of that thing to come and find out what is going on so if I keep killing people in a particular region I don't need to invite any spirit I create a portal the moment a spirit comes in partnership with me that becomes an altar that's why in many regions, many campuses, they have different regions. Some have prayer mountains. Some have, we used to have years ago um, in the campus, there's somewhere they call Lontenis Court. That was a physical, solid portal. That's where you see people carry their rechargeable and their socks for mosquitoes. And go there and lie down and say, oh God, if you don't help me, I'm dead. And by the next morning, there is a miracle. You find people just mind their business standing and start shaking because activities. Over many years, there were people making use of that ground and it became sanctified. Angelic activities became so much there. It was, it was like how you do home cell because there are visitations and many members are within a region. You dedicate a place and say, look, all of you within this region, you can freely find expression here consistency can open up a portal are you learning something tonight that's how many of our parents made our homes certain portals every time they continued doing certain things and they did not know when they invited the spirit dimensions. You see, let me tell you, consistency attracts the realm of the spirit. Consistent. Ask those who practice other religions. You know how they invoke spirits? Enchantments. The same word repeated over a long period of time. How do they celebrate traditional festivals in many villages? The people keep dancing, doing the same thing for hours. And then it becomes like they are supercharged at a point. The spirit component of that activity has come. I'd like you to say, Lord, open my eyes. Say it. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. There is a law in the dealings of God with men. And it says, whatever you yield yourself to, it says you will become a slave of that thing. Have, have you, have you, are we together? If I practice obedience consistently, I have yielded my members to obedience, I become a slave to obedience. Are we together now? You see, watch this. If I steal this handkerchief, watch this. If I steal this handkerchief out of my volition, it's not enough 
to bring the spirit of theft in my life. No. If I do it again, and I do it again, that I don't know I'm invoking a mystery by my consistency. A time will come, the spirit that operates on men will say, I'm being invited within a territory. It will look for the territory where the physical dimension of what is bringing it is. The same way, if I begin to pray, I may not feel comfortable, but as I'm praying, I'm invoking a dimension of the operation of the spirit, of the spirit of prayer and supplication. A day will come in that place, that dimension will be revealed in me. Supernaturally. Are you learning something? Because you see, not all altars were consciously built, but they are still altars. So it is, when I say altars that are destroying you, it doesn't mean you have to go to your village and waylay your uncle and say, if you don't tell us what you have done, we will beat you. No, he may be innocent. This is where the prophetic ministry must be guided. Because every time we talk of altar, they think it must be traceable to a real experience. No. The mysteries that you do consistently are building altars. And they eventually become invitations for spirits. Whether the spirit of God or any kind of demon spirit. Have you had an experience? I'm not saying you should do it. But you've seen it in ministries. Where somebody can come, no church service, just enter the church and come and lie down on the altar and roll, maybe for a child, and go back and have triplets. Now, question, was anybody preaching? But because the, the power and the presence of God has found expression upon that ground for a long time. You have invited, you have invoked a dimension. Whether service is at work or not, that portal remains open. All that it takes is your faith. Once your faith meanders that atmosphere, it happens to you. Samuel was an altar. He didn't have an altar. He was an altar. You never came near Samuel and went back the same. No! A young man came around Samuel and stood naked, prophesied morning till night. That's an altar. When Saul went and met Samuel, they were looking for the donkey. As soon as they saw Samuel, they knew their lives were going to be altered. I told you altars are not just physical monuments. You can be an altar. And that's one of the things that prayer does. You don't build a monument. Your life becomes the activation of seven. Listen, the beauty of prayer is not just for you to continue talking for the rest of your life, but that you get to a state of consistency where even in your silence, listen, you have become an altar. Spiritual activities can be happening around you. So that as a living altar, I activate possibilities just by walking. You come around me and something happens to you. I didn't directly pray for you. You didn't even know you had that problem. But an atmosphere that I was carrying implicated you. Why is prayer important? Why do we have to build an altar of prayer? Three reasons very quickly. Number one, prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with Him. Write it down. Prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with Him. The Bible is very clear that the communion of the Spirit, the fellowship of the Spirit, what we call koinonia, must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with God. And that system of koinonia is through prayer. Prayer is one of God's authorized system. Not the only authorized system, but one of the major authorized system 
for communion and fellowship Luke chapter 6 let's take a few scriptures very quickly Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 please give it to us Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 then we'll look at Matthew 26 verse 36 and down to 39 it's actually to 44 but we'll stop at 39 quickly Luke chapter 6 verse 12 look up everyone please it says and it came to pass those days speaking about Jesus now that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God communion Jesus was not just praying prayer requests like we do during miracle service remember he was God he still is God but he went to spend time all night communing communing give us Matthew Matthew 26 and verse 36 Matthew 26 verse 36 then come at Jesus with them listen this was uh, his passion was about to start then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples sit here while I go and pray yonder and let's watch what the Bible calls prayer and he took from him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy 38 then he said unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me please continue quickly and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying saying this sounds like a communication a conversation my father if it be possible let this call pass of me when you read down to verse 44 he prayed the same thing three times prayer is God's authorized system of communion not just a platform for petitions prayer is how power is transferred to men it's an authorized system of communion it's your spiritual system of intimacy and intercourse in the place of prayer that's where the exchange happens between divinity Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit but never manifested the power of the Holy Ghost after prayer the Bible says he returned not full of the Spirit but in the power of the Spirit in Luke 17 don't turn there John 17 sorry Jesus himself began to communicate with the Father as usual and he says Father the hour has come watch communion through prayer the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son will bring glory to you and then he began to converse look at all the platforms till today listen till today how Jesus advocates for believers in heaven is still through prayer the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the father and he makes intercession for the saints why will you intercede when you are already seated by the right hand it's a system it's not about proximity it's a system of communion and communication if you are not a man of prayer you are not a woman of prayer you can be sure that the reality of communion and fellowship with the Holy Ghost that reality you see let me tell you something if you are not open to prayer you will never understand what we are saying you would think it's just um, I'm not just talking of corporate prayer corporate prayer is great but you must have the secret place that's where he comes to meet with you that's when he tells you things he cannot tell any other person the reason why you don't hear God is because you are not used to his voice in the secret place he has not trained you to hear him so you hear everything and you call it him I was counseling a couple some I think I don't know if it was last week and um, the mother was outside and the father came in with the daughters maybe they are even here listening to me and they held a little baby as soon as the baby shouted from outside the mother identified the voice and came to check what was happening with the baby and I said koinonia that's intimacy because there is a union that baby is sucking from the same mother their interaction the mother did not train herself to hear the voice she was implicated by that koinonia 
So anywhere she, there were many people, families with their children. But when she had her own, he said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Meaning if you cannot ask, hear his voice, find out whether you are his sheep or not. Don't assume you are his sheep. Assumption is costly in the school of intimacy. You must verify that there is contact between you and God. There are pastors that don't pray. So they get angry. They think the manifestation of the power of God is magic. There are dimensions impartation will not give you. You must dig your well by yourself. You must create an altar, a system. You must gain mastery in the realm of the spirit. You must be used to the spiritual communication that has been act. It's, it's like a tailor-made system of God reaching you. God must know how to reach you on serious informations. God must know how to reach you on trivial informations. He must train your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. That place of training is the secret place. I will never trade anything for my time with him. That's where men are built. That's where there is an exchange. See, let me tell you. Holding a mic and teaching is not difficult. Holding a mic and preaching is not difficult. But communicating life, that one is a derivative of your altar. That's why we sleep in church. That's why our churches are full of dry bones. From the preacher to those listening. All dry bones. People stand and talk. They say something that should bless you. And you wonder why it doesn't bless you. Because there is no altar. They are standing unassisted by the realm of the spirit. Number two, quickly. Why do we need the altar of prayer? Prayer creates a legal platform. For God... Prayer creates a legal platform for God, angels, and the spirit realm to gain entrance and access. Prayer creates a legal platform. Mark the word legal. It has to be legal. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. The dealings of God with men are on legal grounds. That's why God could not just pronounce men justified. The system had to be followed to the latter. Prayer creates a legal platform for God, angels, and the spirit realm to gain entrance or access and intervene in the affairs of men and offer assistance to men, whichever you want to write. A platform for entrance, legally. I know that many of you are surprised. Why should God Almighty need the cooperation of a man to step into the realm? He limited himself in the creation of man. Let me show you two scriptures that I think will bless you. Psalms 115 verse 16. It's a popular scripture in the body of Christ. Psalms 115 and verse 16. Then give us Ezekiel 22 from verse 30 to 31. Psalms 115 verse 116. Can we read it together? One to read the heaven, even the heavens, other versions say the heaven of heavens are the Lord's. Read on, but the earth as a territory has he given to where? Watch this. Let me give you a little explanation. If if a Jimmy has a house, are we together? And he decides to rent that house to me. Now, it is true that it is still his house. But does he have a right to just enter any time again? No. Even if he comes to that house, although it is your house, but there is a legal transaction that happened between me and you. So even as the landlord, you will still knock. And I have a right to tell you you are disturbing my privacy. And you will still go. So God is still the lord of all creation but he carved out a domain of his kingdom apportioned it to man and it became scripturally incorrect for god to come to the earth without a man permitting him that's why the holy spirit
had to move Michael, Gabriel, to come and ask for permission from Mary before Jesus entered her womb. Mary could not just see her womb. No, 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 no. It was a discussion. This is what we want to do. Can your womb be available? The, what was the permission? Be it unto me. I authorize you. How shall these things be? Don't worry about the dynamics. Your womb will just don't be surprised when you find out your stomach is just protruding. Be it unto me. And he had to go to Joseph and say, Joseph, you are about to see something strange in your wife. Now, I know that is going to shock you, but please, 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 don't drive her. There is a mystery she's carrying and Joseph calmed down. Look at how God had to go to the relevant people to ask for permission. Permission. One by one. While he was doing that, he was breathing upon Anna the prophetess to keep praying. Breathing on Simeon in the temple to keep praying. John the Baptist who will baptize and ordain Jesus. His father wanted to play with redemption. He thought he was just playing with a sacrifice. An angel appears to him and says, Mr. Man, your wife is going to have a child. The name is John and he, met, he spoke one kind of nonsense and heaven said, no, 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 no. This guy would disallow us, shut his mouth. He's a priest, meaning there is a grace for him to operate in that priestly office. Shut his mouth so that he will not say anything because words are padlocks and are keys. It can disallow and allow reality. So he said, shut his mouth. This, this guy wants to spoil this thing we are doing. And they shut his mouth, not as wickedness, as a strategy to make sure John arrives so that Jesus will be commissioned. When John was born, they said, What shall we name him? The wife said, John. They said, No, we've not had this name. Then they went to the dumb father now, Mr. Man. What was the last thing when you spoke with the angel? What did you hear? And he wrote on the book, John. Is that a prayer? And his mouth opened. God said, now you can say anything you want to say. You have authorized heaven. Now, watch this. Look how hard it is for God to find expression in the earth. He must go around. That's why I taught you about the gift of men. God cannot be the author of death. Knowing how hard it is to find a man and find expression through him. For 430 years, God was busy preparing the man who will be a deliverer. Not if he promised Abraham captivity for 400 years. But even God became limited for 30 extra years until Moses was trained. Are you blessed? John the Baptist found himself in the wilderness. The requirement to ordain Jesus. He ate locusts and wild honey. Had sheep camel you know clothes and all of that and he came out and started baptizing baptized jesus christ and that was all and jesus began his ministry listen every time it looks like darkness is prevailing over your life it is not that god is limited it is because you have not understood that until heaven is authorized god can do nothing about it the heaven of heavens belong to the lord the earth has he given to the sons of men elijah knew this that everything under the heavens was within the jurisdiction of men and he didn't go to beg god he went and said i lock up because this cloud that brings rain is under the heavens so i lock it up and i put the key in my pocket listen to what he said there would not be rain except at my word. But the Bible, James, Apostle James, had a revelation of what he did. He said, don't think he just spoke grammar. He went and locked himself and prayed endlessly. He was a man of like passion. But he allowed God. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30 and 31. Please, quickly. Many of us have not been assisted by the spirit realm simply because we do not know that we have a role. We have a role to creating the portal that grants us access to assistance. And I search for a man among them. Listen. Who is talking here? God to his prophet. Why will God be looking for men? 
with over how many people at, at that time in the earth and it's still applicable to us today I sought for a man among them that should make up what? a hedge, a gap they have violated something they invoked a mystery that will force me now to punish them but in my kindness I'm searching for a man who can make me change my mind but I'm not finding any therefore don't blame me when your family remains poor it's not that I want Satan to prevail there is something that happened in your family that lifted an altar of poverty and God keeps watching it ravage you for decades and God is saying I'm searching for a man who will rise up as an altar and cause me to act otherwise I was until I learned this I was surprised how God would just allow evil to happen like that and many people say ah, ah, but God can't you arise he said when you pray ask me that my kingdom should come what, what kind of thing is that ask me authorize me Matthew 6 he was teaching them the beatitudes when you pray part of the content of your authorization should be that the kingdom come he said as I hear you say before my ears so will I do please leave it there I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for what? not just for an individual for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none so let's see what would happen in 31 Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude even Pharaoh and his army slain by the sword said the Lord Ezekiel 22 you are giving us a wrong scripture here that's what I gave you right Ezekiel 22 30 31 please correct it and let's have it quickly media are we there please help, help whoever is working we need some level of accuracy The scripture I'm looking for the scripture that therefore have I poured out that is what we just read therefore have I poured out my word indignation upon them I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way have I recompensed upon their heads in other words it looks like I'm the one punishing them but they cost it they cost it that means the darkness in your family regardless of what people are saying oh god my name is john we are still dying and god is saying don't look at me as a wicked person i while i'm i'm pathetic there is a legal system operating this operation and somebody must arise and become an altar, an altar that activates something different and then you will now see my kindness listen God is not the one ruling this earth with the nonsense that is happening. There are manipulations that are sending strange incense. And we are receiving assistances from strange spirits that are antichrist. And they are helping to destroy the world. But he must find a people. That's why men are a serious business to God. Many of us act unassisted. Many pastors act unassisted. The realm of the spirit is available to assist. But until we call. Until we call. Pray in tongues for one minute and say, Lord, I call you. I call you into my life and into my situation. I don't assume you are aware. I authorize you. Shabras kataba segete kalabarusa sibriyasha. Lord, if you don't step in, something will go wrong in my life. My family is in trouble. For 30 years, nobody has risen in my lineage. Something is wrong. Every year, someone is dying. 
Yet there are prophetic words over my family. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shapras katako sibaria sakato bashiba. Ten graduates, no one is employed. Ten ladies, no one married. All the men in the family are fed by all the women. I authorize you. I authorize you. Shabakoto sobakai. Lekete kota sapres katoshi paratia. Everyone in my family fails when a miracle is about to come. Another mystery kicks in. Everyone in my family must have a child out of wedlock. It happened to my grandmother. It happened to my mother. Now the devil wants it to happen to me. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Listen, let me tell you. I studied my life, I studied my lineage, I studied my family. And I saw things that I knew were not funny. I knew that those things were activations. And if I were to answer the call of God upon my life and prevail, something must happen. An altar gives life to a covenant. I saw things happening around my life, happening around my family. Let me tell you what most of us do. We identify what is wrong. Then we hope that a man of God will solve it for us. Yes! When you need a high anointing, that's a different thing. But many of us just complain. Nothing is working in my life. My father graduates, my mother graduates, ten of us in our family graduates, nothing is working. It will continue like that because there is something making God look like a wicked person. I sought for a man in your family. It's not that he cannot convert everybody. To become a Christian, I sought for a man who will raise an altar of righteousness that will allow me to do wonders. Wanting to deliver the nation of Israel from Egypt. Imagine how the heart of God bled when he saw the soldiers of Pharaoh weeping God's covenant people. Man, who is the man that I will send? In Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel stood before the dry bones. I thought God would say, Bones, come back to life. He said, Ezekiel, you know this law of territory. I can't speak and it will just happen. So I will tell you. I will speak from heaven to you. Then you speak now in the earth. I prophesied as I was commanded. When God spoke, the bone did not move. When he prophesied as he commanded, all of a sudden there was a sound. Oh, God spoke to me in a vision. I, I had that dream. And God said it's over. And you get up and just smile. You are joking. It will never be over. It was over in the realm of the spirit. What you do with that encounter is to stand up. Put that word and say I legislate. I agree with you. Lord my prayer and my dancing and my rejoicing is my agreement. That's why we have many dreams that never come to pass. You see 10 over 10 in the realm of the spirit. You see 0 in the physical. You see a job in the realm of the spirit. You see demotion in the physical. God told you his intention in the realm of the spirit. Your carelessness aborted it in the physical. Take seriously what I'm saying. The same way you see that somebody is about to be sick or to be destroyed in your family. And you get up and just keep quiet. And then the day something devastating happens, you say, hey, I saw this thing. That's a pain in the heart of God. Because he, he kept moving around your whole house by his spirit. Searching for who was alert enough to communicate to him that this is a plot from darkness. When God did anything in the nation of Israel and did not tell the prophets, they were angry. Read your Bible. They said, God hid this thing from me. Number 
Number three. What is the third? Purpose of the altar of prayer. The altar of prayer is God's authorized system for enforcing dominion. God's authorized system for enforcing dominion and compliance. God gave man dominion over creation. It will take man exercising it. And prayer is the authorized platform for enforcing dominion. The Bible says we do not yet see all things under his feet. So although God has said you will rise up as an international man of God, but you will watch your life crumble to nonsense. Because before your arrival, another altar had been raised. And so it will take you enforcing dominion. I may come from this family, but I officially divorce myself from every nonsense that happened. No. No. The same way someone is born of a millionaire and all of a sudden the child starts enjoying the benefits even before being aware that is the implication are we together now a woman may be for instance um, having a particular biological disease maybe a hepatitis or something and give birth to an innocent child and they say that child also has hepatitis did the child ask for it? No. Genetic condition. It's the same way. What stopped your father, stopped your mother, you laughed at them and quarreled them, he's still waiting for you. Because until it is destroyed, listen, let me tell you something about altars. For as long as an altar is said, it's alive, the covenant will keep working. That's the concept of priesthood. Priesthood is a system to keep altars alive so that covenants will remain in force so that certain dimensions will continue to operate. There are many things that will not obey you until you force them to. There are many things in your life. Your destiny will not open up just because you think you should have a good life. That's a joke. It's a costly joke. You will not get a job just because you got first class. You will not be promoted just because you think you are due. Nothing is fair in this life. Everything that happens to you is what you force to happen through knowledge. Apostle, life is so unfair to us in the family. I sympathize with you, but this is the wickedness in the world that we live in. Listen, if you want to take your portion in this life, you are going to take it by enforcing compliance. Your church will not grow just because you think you are a nice pastor. Being nice is not the seed for results. The ability to exercise dominion. Are we together? It takes prayer. There are many people who don't pray. They just get up and please come. You just see someone and, and he say, Pastor, pray for me. And your ego is on the line. And you know that you have not sustained power with God. No altar of prayer. And you just believe you just lay your hand. And you lay your hands in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, yes, it said. Yes, the Bible said. But it takes your life to activate that reality. The Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick. God said it. I believe it. It settles it. You are a joker. You are a big joker. No, it doesn't settle it. No, it doesn't settle it. There is a dynamic to manifestation. Let's not mock ourselves. And you try to pray for this person. And all of a sudden, number one, he's not healed. Number two, it backfires on you. Are we together now? All of a sudden you find out that the same thing you try to pray for him for the tragedies and calamities in his life you brought yourself through ignorance and the whole thing backfired on you 
We are walking in an environment that is surrounded with altars. They give you a job and you enter the company. You are not the CEO. You are walking there. You don't know what spiritual backings have been invoked over that environment. Until you create your own climate, you will be a victim of the default climate. There are people who fraternize with the devil. I will employ people to work for me, but they will never rise above me. So if the man goes down, everybody will go down to still keep him above them because it's a covenant. Now you got a job. Fresh from the university, your blood is hot. Everybody dances around church. You carry your certificate. And all of a sudden, you are earning 300,000, but you cannot bring out 10,000. You are not a drunkard. You don't pursue women. You don't know what happened. And all that swallows up that thing. That's what I'm telling you what has happened to many of our parents. So we think the solution is promotion. Oh God, promote me. Then your salary is now 400,000. The effect is still the same. But a woman who went to a man of God and is joining a little prayer group in her ignorance is flying Akara somewhere in the junction. And with that Akara, she trained seven children in school. It's not Akara. She was assisted by the realm of the spirit. No, sir. You don't train children with, with frying a caradier. You can come and meet that woman and beg her for a loan of 100,000. And she will laugh. She will say, I'm coming. She will enter the room and bring it out. Yet you claim that you are doing a white collar job. And the altar fights you. Listen. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Whenever you prevail in the realm of the spirit, an altar prevails. Believe what I'm telling you. Zaria has an altar. The effects of the altar in Zaria is predictable. You see it in the civilization of the people. You see it in what happens to people. The marginalizations that people never rise to certain dimensions. You came to Zaria and just thought it's all about going to church. No. You create your climate. You create your climate. That's why it says, Yea, though I walk, though I walk through a valley that has the shadow of death, I fear no evil because I carry another climate. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So you are in a place where people cannot live up to 40 years. You know, you are aware in your village, you see people dying like chickens, but you come with another order. You understand that the altar of prayer is also an altar that can contend with everything. And you are enjoying long life. You are enjoying grace. The person who married earliest in your family was 45. Are we together? And you look and you say no. You get married then you must spend 5 or 10 years to have your first child. If you sit down and keep watching it, and don't cry for assistance and don't force compliance it will never work I watch people and my heart bleeds at their perception of God which is based on their consistent sufferings they conclude that God is not a merciful God but he still sought for a man that through the altar of prayer you can nullify certain activities legal ordinances that have been erected to speak you will be dreaming to believe there's nothing speaking against you now no sir you have lived too long to have created one by mistake you have lived too long on earth if you are up to one years old welcome to the reality of this life there has to be something speaking the bible says the sin of disobedience is like what witchcraft witchcraft what is the operation of witchcraft so we all want to rise it's a year of triumph and there is you think that the whole thing is your grandfather or grandmother and the day you hear that they are dead you rejoice the priesthood died but the altar is still alive you see that and the altar is fine and good doing well 
That's why you find out the solution is not just to kill people around. The solution is through spiritual intelligence. To lift up a spiritual fortification that vetoes everything. Brothers and sisters, you will leave heaven on earth. All of a sudden, they will watch you. Ah, ah. You've been in Zamfara for three years. But you are returning as if you are in the UK. You can fly to UK with that altar. It will wait for you at Heathrow Airport. As soon as you are landing, you enter and all the doors close. People who never knew you are still manipulated by that altar to work against you. And you thought it's just something in Nigeria. And at the end of it, you come back after five years looking like a thief. Where have you been? UK. Are you sure? Yes. Why are you like this? You know the way life is. People smuggle their way and pass through rivers and deserts all to go to Germany and UK. Whereas they think that's the greener pasture. The greener pasture is the altar you raise. That speak. That speak. That speak. Until Jesus came, there was a universal altar speaking against man. Vengeance. Vengeance. But when Jesus came, he established another altar that spoke better promises. Better things. I cannot live walking and living my life to chance and hoping that things will be alright. I know things will not be alright. If they will be alright, you must create it. You must create it. So I enforce compliance. Will the devil leave you because he thinks God anointed you? No. No. Satan is not that cheap. You are going to contend. That's why he said, put on the whole armor. Put on the whole armor. There is a devil somewhere that will destroy your life, destroy your ministry, destroy your business, destroy your destiny. You get married to a very lovely wife. You loved her with all your heart. They ask both of you, will you love yourself? You say yes. The moment you married, everybody brought their altars in holy matrimony. Now, you are nice people. This altar was designed to scatter the finances of whoever is standing with you. And all of a sudden, a good woman, but you find out that your entire life starts going down. And if you meet a, a prophet who is not sound in scripture, he will tell you your wife is the reason for your failure. Based on prophetic insight, he has seen that there is an altar associated with her. It's not a lie that is responsible for that downfall. The individual may be the nicest person in the world, but the altar will not change. Please hear what I'm teaching you. And there are men, no matter what happens, if they marry, maximum three years, the wife must die. And all of a sudden, from the day the dear lady got married, he may be a pastor, apostle, prophet. How many men of God have altars fighting them? They look around and they claim nothing is happening. And they assume that because they took on the call for ministry, God is too generous to allow them. It's a joke. No, sir. And this man gets married to this dear lady. And all of a sudden she starts sleeping. Mysterious sicknesses she never had. Heart palpitations. She will feel been pressed and she says my husband I don't know what is wrong I'm at, since we got married I say, are you trying to say I'm a witch look at what the altars are causing then two of them go for counseling and they meet a man of God who is sincere but no spiritual intelligence and he says look it's how marriages are just take it easy pray together and it doesn't mean what he's saying and they say okay they say hug your wife in front of me they now hug themselves hold my hand darling they go back home the altar say well come back by evening that man has slapped her again remember he promised in the presence of the pastor not to do it again but the altars brothers and sisters that's why god puts meetings like this because you can be sitting down now not knowing the deliverance that is happening you just feel something left me i don't know what happened and you go back and you who would have you would have blown somebody out of anger you find out that that force that comes upon you when you are angry that can make you insult anybody is no longer there because there is an altar this ministry you see is an altar we don't have an altar this is it's a, it's an altar 
That's why you can talk against it in your secret place and start going down. Nobody is aware. Because the altar speaks. All of a sudden, a man of God will teach them how to raise altars. And they will raise an altar of prayer. And come and say, look, we are not bad people. The devil is confusing us here. You are a good woman. I am a good person. We did not negotiate where to come from. And all of a sudden, day one, Shekato Praskataya. Now watch what is happening. They are holding their hands and praying. After that day, they just feel good, but nothing really happens. I told you consistency is how spirits are attracted. Day two, Shekato the, the man doesn't want to pray. But she says, honey, remember, we are on a project here. You know what we, are le we have left at home. Let's do this thing. After one week, two weeks, somebody starts having a dream somewhere. After one week, a spirit must appear to somebody somewhere and try to warn somebody. An effect is being created in the realm of the spirit. It's not a sign of weakness. You can't sit upon hot fire and act as if it's not. It can't be for too long. Listen to me. That's what is happening to some of you now. It was after your seven days of prayer. You had a strange dream you have never had. You thought it's a sign that you are losing. It's a sign of victory. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. All of a sudden, you went to sleep and you saw a vision of your mother when she was young. Your father when he was young. The spirit of God is trying to show you something. Follow him. But that's when the spirit of slumber comes. God keeps saying for one month, wake up by two o'clock. There's something I'm doing in your life. After two weeks, you don't wake up again. You see how we cheat ourselves and you don't know that you are on the path of deliverance. You reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign, you reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, Listen, I promise you, if you listen to what I'm teaching you tonight, many of you, as soon as you go back, you will see the dream you will have this night. The devil hates what you are hearing because this is the age long mystery that has kept people in your family educated, but it's like they are not educated. A pastor, you are blessing people, but you never rise yourself. Do you know why? Because your victory is tied to your altar, not just your service. Your altar. I created an altar that is independent of Koinonia. And I said, No devil will come and destroy me. No. No. Watch this. Please come again. The two weeks we are praying. Shabra kato soto bash. Lebre koto shabaya. We are praying. We are praying. We are fasting. Something starts happening. One day there will be a breaking point in the realm of the spirit. If that prayer were two hours, a day will come to become a vigil. Not by, not because you like it. There will be, you will break open a portal in the realm of the spirit and two hours prayer will become prayer till morning and your child will come and meet you and say that I saw a man in white and I saw the man doing something on your head spiritual activities are happening in the family all of a sudden you start seeing doors opening you love your wife like never before the devil told you the secret is to marry another one no sir you marry another one the altar is still the same there are pastors, the altars that fight them. Anniversaries of their ministry, something happens. People start leaving. They have raised so many people, but have not been raised by themselves. There are altars. I've seen it fight people. I've seen it fight people I know. These altars fought me for years. You go to sleep, a strange woman appears to you and sleeps with you in the dream you get up and say sorry i don't know what is happening someone is about to marry you here comes the stranger again what is bringing the stranger have you ever asked 
you relocate to another house, he still looks for you and comes. They are about to promote you in the office. All of a sudden, your physical document disappears. Physical document. How many students seated here? That's the mystery behind the results you are seeing. The ugly results that you are seeing. You love God and you are sincere. But that's the mystery behind the demonic things you see on that board. You are not that dull. You write your exams and go back. The altars continue writing things. Continue writing things. I know what I'm saying. Listen to me. You hear people coming here with four points. They were not born that way. They have tapped into a higher covenant. You see them surprised by their own results. They know it's not their efforts. That's why people join certain ministries. Join certain men of God. See, people partner with certain anointings. This is the mystery of partnership. When you partner with an anointing, you access the covenant. The covenant, not the promise. The covenant. There are parents today, the moment you are 50 years arthritis, you get up one morning, father cannot work, mother cannot work, their entire pension is spent on it. It's not sickness, it's a programming. An altar is accurate with digital precision, regardless of your foreknowledge. It will work. It will work. I have seen it destroy families. I have seen it destroy ministries. That's why certain ministries remain small. No matter how anointed they are, an anointed man with fire on his head, but he will not cross certain boundaries. Once they reach 200, something must happen. A wrong news will spread around. A scandal must come. Whether it's true or not. Have you not seen students their last and final exams they will go and the spirit will start moving them carry something to the exam hall they don't want to but it's an altar you are too weak to fight it you will promise that you will not take it and you take it as soon as you are sitting they just catch you and they said your entire six seven years cancelled brothers and sisters it's an altar There are families that as a family, they are victims of abuse. Everybody. Mother, father, brothers. All the daughters will eventually meet a man of God somewhere. And all the man of God will do is to destroy them. It will happen. They are scattered in every place, but their experiences are the same. You will see them and like them. But at the end of it, you must leave them with pain. They think is that the ministry is bad, but the issue is the altar. There are altars. You give birth to men, they must die. They must die. Something must kill them. No matter how healthy they are, they must die. Brothers and sisters, I have seen this evil. It exists. Tonight we are going to pray. Are we together? When it's time, I'm not going to give you a prayer point. When it's time to pray, we are going to pray. Tonight you are going to erect. Many of you, as you pray tonight, you will see what will begin to happen to you. I want us to lift up a fire in this place tonight. And say, Lord, this demon that molests me in my sleep, I can't be pretending that it's not there again. These animals that come to me in my sleep, no. I started a business well. Why is it that I start good things? Something evil must come. Lift your voice and pray. Sacotos, so no me quería. 
war a good warfare tonight for the sake of my children. Oh God arise. Oh God arise. Oh God of Jeshurun that rides upon the wings of the wind. Arise. Arise. Be serious tonight. I tear down altars. I use prayer as a system of authorization. This cause must stop. Upon my life must stop. This yoke must be broken. Rakata kato soto beleketa shambras katavos eteros katavos shepresto na 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 elekoto soto mas rakata bakata bakata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight. I stand. On behalf of myself. And my family. And I declare. That every altar. That is speaking. Against my destiny, I tear it down tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Separate from God's sort of us. I tear it down. All that of delay, all that of barrenness, all that of failure. yourselves to two. Find, find a partner and hold a hand. Be serious, please. If the person by your side is not serious, leave him alone. We are doing serious business tonight. Find a partner and hold a hand. Shabakato labakaya. Embretekas katafraska labakuria dabashne. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every legal access I have given for these altars to speak against me knowingly and unknowingly tonight I invoke the blood let the blood speak lift your voice and begin to pray every legal access every legal access every legal access I have given any altar of darkness Shabbat Kata Mate Lekotosia Even the lawful captives shall be delivered Even the lawful captives 
shall be delivered. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone else. Look for another partner. Hold the hands of someone else. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of failure. I speak to you. In the name of Jesus I tear you down Release my destiny Release my destiny Altars of poverty Altars of delay Altars of stagnation I speak against you I speak against you I curse you By the God of heaven By the God of heaven Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many miracles in people. We are still praying, please. We are still praying. Shalapakaya. We are still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We are still praying. We are making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Altars that are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny because of where I'm coming from. I prophesy tonight. Your hold is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Altars associated with territories. Associated with territories. I come against you by the God of heaven. I come against you. Pray, pray. I come against you. Hallelujah. 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 Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years. But it looks like it has not manifested because every time it's reaching you, an altar lifts up. We are going to call it back. Are you ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight. 
by prophecy I call you back to my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray and watch the God of wonders authorize the God of heaven and watch restoration happen in your destiny respond relationships respond finances respond mantles respond ministries Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen. I don't care how many. Call it. Listen. You are going to call them one by one. And say I stand as an altar. And I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them by name. Call them. I bring you out of this wasteful living. Call them. Shake it, man, and I'm a confident. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Be serious. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. Everywhere my favor is. In the name of Jesus. I command it to my life now. Lift your voice and pray. You don't have to travel. Call it everywhere it is. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen. I want you to pray and talk to God. Tell Him, Lord, I'm part of this apostolic family. The altar you have erected here must speak for me. I want my life to show it from today. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with understanding and watch what happens to you. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Understanding. Lord, I inform the altar that you have with your servant. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Maketos soto mo shabada. La pray maketos koso to be seketia. I declare it. Maketos soto be seketia.
Hallelujah. Many of you may not realize what is happening to you. Please, I don't want you to idolize this teaching. No. It's not about religiosity. It's about proper understanding and application. So it's not just coming to lie down here. No, 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 no. The altar is a revelation. We are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives. Listen, because many of us here, the only time you pray is when you are together with people. Satan started attacking you. He gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life. He will never attack it at once. He can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication, the grace to pray, I receive it right now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Fire, fresh fire on my altar. Fresh grace to pray. Fresh grace to fast. Fresh grace to intercede. Fresh grace for warfare. I command every dead prayer life around my life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and I will pray for you. There are many of us, the Spirit of God started revealing things to you because you were meeting with Him every day. But something happened, no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life. No access to illumination. You used to be, you used to have projects that you and God are on. You can literally say we are on a faith project. But now there's nothing like that. Your life has become stale and barren. Some of you is when you started ministry. This, this so-called thing called ministry. That's what destroyed you. We are going to pray a prayer of restoration. And the fire will fall upon you. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Say Holy Spirit. I ask that you manifest yourself once again in my life Holy Spirit I cry for intimacy afresh with you lift your voice and begin to pray intimacy Spirit of the living God do not be far from me again pray pray let it not be that you are just a stranger we were closer than this and something happened. Pray. Restore that intimacy. Restore that sweet fellowship that I once had with you. Fellowship that nothing in this world could be compared. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I tell you, there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies. I pray for you now. I'm praying for you. In the name that is above all names. Everyone hearing me and standing here, whether inside or outside, you have prayed. If there is any altar as I speak now that is speaking against your life, at the count of three, I command those altars to catch fire right now. 
please get ready. The power of God will come on people. One, two, three. I command those altars now. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. I command those altars be broken. Be broken. Listen. Lift your hands. I'm challenging altars of failure. Listen. Just, I'm praying for you. Don't pray. Just listen to me. Because I'm seeing people here. Failure. It has nothing to do with academics. It makes you fail in everything. I stretch my hands. May that fire anyone here who is a victim, that altar is speaking. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now by fire. I judge those altars now. There are altars that cause men to see things and never handle it. You see a job, they tell you it's yours. Quarter to reception, everything changes. I don't know who belongs to that category, but in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, following online, anyone who has been a victim. Of total failure and disappointment right now in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus I command total deliverance help them help them please total deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ put down your hands ladies keep your hands lifted I will tell you why I'm praying There are many ladies, let me tell you. Many people don't know why things don't work, especially for ladies. It's not because you are ladies. And it's not because you are bad. It's because many ladies are spiritually ignorant of what they represent in the realm of the spirit. A lady is not just another human being who is not a man. No, it's more than that. A lady is the chiefest point of entrance, even among men. That's why she has a womb. The only lady, a lady is a gate in the realm of the spirit. It's not just a human being. Keep your hands lifted. That's why demons look for them. That's why spirits look for them. That's why altars speak against them. It may not be caused by you, but I'm praying for you. Keep your hands lifted. You may not understand what is happening. Lord Jesus, I'm praying now. That any one of our sisters here, whose family and destiny is under siege shakas kopayaka mantele kos kata pris kalato shikre ataka i'm declaring anyone who made a covenant with the earth for your destiny anyone who passed through fire to make a covenant with your destiny in the name that is above all names i decree and declare upon every lady now be free in the name of jesus free in the name of Jesus from those yokes those yokes that cause fibroid those yokes that cause fibroid those yokes that cause lungs around your body those lungs those barrenness I cut it by the God of heaven I cut it by the God of heaven Hallelujah. I'm seeing 11 ladies. The Lord is opening my eyes. Listen now. I'm seeing rings on all their 10 fingers. And this is a very serious demonic case. And the Lord wants to set them free now. You will not know it. It's not something you know. One of you used to see it. Physically, you see rings on your hands. In the name of Jesus. 11 people. Ladies especially. I'm praying now. Some are inside. Some are outside. Doesn't matter where you are. 
the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. Lord, I pray, whoever came into this meeting, whether online or offline, and belongs to that category, in the name of Jesus, as I'm praying now, I command, I'm praying now, the fire will fall on certain people. Eleven in all I see. Lord, let it be right now. I, I break that marriage. I break that spiritual marriage. I break that spiritual marriage. My God, my God, my God, my God. I break that spiritual marriage. There's one of them you should have married. But this is what stops everybody that comes around you. I command it broken right now. 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 Hallelujah. Our time is gone. The Lord is asking me to minister to someone here. Somebody comes to you in the night physically. I'm not talking of vision. Physically. You feel somebody lying down around your bed. Sometimes sleeping with you. You are feeling it. This is not guesswork. This is something you know is happening. Wherever that person is. Right now in Jesus name. I stretch my hands. There is no escape. In the name of Jesus. Whether inside or outside. You are in this category now. I command judgment. Judgment on any strange spirit. Judgment on any stranger. Judgment on any stranger. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know, but we're rounding up. Please just, just be patient with me. I'm hearing in my spirit Yoruba people. Yoruba people. There is, there is something, a deliverance that God is bringing now to Yoruba people. You know how God acts as I'm speaking now. Everyone associated with that territory, I place the word of God now. In the name of Jesus, let that sword of deliverance, I command that double-edged sword to locate everyone from the southwestern part now who is in need of territorial deliverance. I command it now, inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, no escape. No escape for any power of darkness. Every mark of this favor that is on anyone's life here. You watch what happens to your life from this meeting. Anyone carrying any mark of this favor, where men should bless you, something about you becomes an irritation. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I'm watching what is happening from the spirit realm, not the physical realm. When you see me keep praying, it's because God is doing something. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I say it again. I command that mysterious mark to be erased from your life right now. Anyone here who has any member of your family that has refused to give birth they have tried and tried and the devil would just not let them have a child either 
she will not take in completely or she will take in and then mysteriously lose the child or the man will not be able to get her pregnant i don't care what situation but please even if you are not the one standing for them i'm praying distance is no barrier i stretch my hands now and i decree by the altar of prayer we authorize angelic assistance to those people right now we authorize angelic assistance right now hear me it was an angel that came to assist mary to get pregnant he showed up and said i was sent your own is to just agree and she said be it unto me and she got pregnant i declare and declare that any manifestation and encounter that they need to go through to have their child i command it to happen now in the name of jesus Let me pray finally for your finances. I believe in God's people empowered. There is no triumph when everything around your life is not working. I want to speak because some of you are titers. Some of you are sowers. Some of you bless, honor God's house. But simply because of certain systems. That manifestation can happen as laziness. That manifestation can happen as disfavor everywhere. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, nobody here is too young to prosper. Don't listen to that nonsense. Nobody here. I'm not talking of business. I'm not talking of a job. I'm talking of a system in the spirit where God will lift you in a way that will make you afraid. I decree and declare now, as I'm praying for you, I'm also praying for families. Because there are families that need help as a matter of emergency. I pray that the demon sitting on the financial destiny of anyone here, sitting on the financial destiny of any family, I clear it out of the way right now. I clear it out of the way right now. I clear it out of the way right now. I clear it out of the way right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Listen, I've shared with you my encounter. I've seen that spirit that they call Mammon. I've seen it. I've shared it here. Some years ago when I was praying, and all of a sudden, my ceiling disappeared. And all of a sudden, I saw a giant creature, like in, as tall as a mango tree, standing, looking like, um, like, like, like a dinosaur, a sea creature with a tail and the tail was another living thing on its own it could detach from that creature and move and the eyes were as big as a human head two red fierce eyes and he was looking at me and he said so you think you can bring god's people into blessings and that was the end of the encounter that was it was that day i knew that wealth is spiritual it's not about what you do it's about what is backing you you can do everything to a poor there must be a spirit assisting you. I call for the ministry of the Holy Spirit over your finances and I command extraordinary results from today. I command strange results from today. I command strange favors from today. I command strange results from today. Strange encounters with destiny help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to wave your hands to Jesus. The Bible says to pray with thanksgiving. Tell him thank you. Thank you. This is part of a fruitful prayer. You don't round up a prayer with amen. You round up a prayer with genuine thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. I know it is done. I receive it because you are faithful. This is the confidence that we have. That when we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. It's our confidence. Hallelujah. Now keep your hands. Please look at me. I want to encourage everyone. As much as God grants you grace, I want you to use this week. Make sure that no day passes without you creating time to blast in tongues at least an hour. At least an hour. No, if you think you don't have the strength, find somebody who God has graced. At least an hour. 
Tuesdays you are sure you can come and our prayer department is there praying. You don't have to be a part of the, the a member of the prayer department. Join them because it's a season where we are breaking things through, breaking things through in the realm of the spirit. Every day, take out time. I would recommend night times for you because most people are working or as students. You may not have the luxury of time to get up in the morning or afternoon, but you can maximize night times. One hour out of 24 at least will not kill you. I want you to cultivate that atmosphere. Carry that consciousness that the, my prayer is creating an altar and that I am an altar myself and refuse to allow the devil play games with your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ now keep standing everyone I want to make an altar call now very quickly there are people here probably you came here for the first time tonight please let me have attention inside and outside and there are people here who the devil has been playing around with your destiny for many years and when you came for this meeting tonight as the word of God was coming the Lord was speaking to you that we need to start afresh again there are such people here right now I want to give you an opportunity to hand your life over to Jesus or others who you were once a serious believer but something happened around your life very quickly we have just two minutes for this Wherever you are, inside or outside, there must be somebody handing his life to Jesus. Make your way right now. I want to pray for you. Let's appreciate them as they come. Don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first person. Somebody is coming. Clap for them inside, outside. If you are outside, make your way in. Quickly. God bless you. God bless you, young and old. Keep coming. If you are outside, please rush and come in. Rush and come in. Clear the way for them. Those coming from outside, hurry up. Please hurry up quickly, quickly, quickly. It's not something that should take forever for you to think about. You should know immediately. Young and old, make your way to Jesus. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it to it and they are saved. Keep coming. Keep coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. Let's encourage them as they come. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate you for the boldness to come and make a declaration to Jesus. Listen, this is not just a poem you are reciting. I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart because it will start a new dimension of living for you. Lift your right hand high to the heavens. Let the devil see it and say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe in you. I ask you to forgive my sins. I ask you to cleanse me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that from tonight, I am a child of God. I keep rising and I never go back again. The power of sin, the power of Satan, the power of the flesh is broken over my life forever in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Father, I stretch my hands to these dear ones and I pray, oh God, that you seal this decision with the presence of your spirit. Let tonight be an encounter that will remain forever in their lives. I declare their sins forgiven and oh God, I decree and declare that from today, they begin a fresh and a new walk with the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to you. Now, I want you to quickly follow a lady waving her hands. All of you together in concert. Just walk this way. Follow the lady waving her hands. And um, they'll take you outside and attend to you very, very briefly. Very quickly, please. Everyone, quickly, quickly. Make way for them. Make way for them. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash koinonia 
Transparency Network International. Or follow us on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash koinonia underscore KNI. You can also download our messages on www.forshare.com. Transparency Network International. Duplicating the corona of God's life.